Good morning, or afternoon, I guess, at this point. I'm a little jet lagged. I don't know about you. How many folks are actually here in Barcelona versus traveling from, from afar? No, no, no audience participation, I see. No worries. Uh, so my name is Elon Ravinovich. Uh, I lead the product and community teams here at Datadog, and I'm here with my colleague, Michael, um, who, who builds uh, a lot of our container integrations and, and data collection platforms at, at, at Datadog as well. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, thank the AppMesh team for introducing us and highlighting a little bit of the capabilities that it offers. Um, and start to talk about a little bit how this fits into the world of observability. For us, this is super exciting. Um, but before we dive in, let's talk about a little bit of da Datadog for a little bit. How many of y'all are using Datadog or are familiar with what we do? Cool. I like seeing all those hands. That's fantastic. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet then. Um, we're we're a, a metrics. Uh, sorry, we're in a, a monitoring and observability, observability platform. We try to help you understand um, your entire stack, so, help you can, so that you can help. Um, scale up and speed up your applications, your infrastructure, and your business. Uh, we provide you visibility to the metrics from everything, uh, from everything from the container services in Amazon to um, other, other Amazon services to the components running on your, on your Kubernetes clusters and everything else in between. Um, we help you describe what's happening in those applications uh, with traces um, so that you can see how the applications are behaving, how they interact with each other. Uh, we do log aggregation to help you understand why and to troubleshoot what's going on when you do have an odd interaction. Um, and that provides you all this contextual information to tie it all together. Um, recently, our most recent product announcement was Synthetix. So we deploy probes all over the world that help you understand the end user experience of interacting with your applications. So you know, uh, whether it be availability, uh, response times, or latency, all of this fits together uh, into, into one platform under Datadog. So with this in mind, it becomes clear why we're so excited about AWS AppMesh and Envoy. In most scenarios, customers send us telemetry about their systems, which would otherwise be a black box. Service meshes flip this on its head. A service mesh provides a path through which all application communication flows. This communication is the source of truth about your entire application topology. Whether you mean it to or not, what's observed here is what is actually happening. We common use the, commonly use the metaphor of the Ptolemaic model of the solar system when talking about monitoring. Taking your infrastructure as the center of your universe and trying to understand the way our customer experiences the applications you provide will distort your view of reality. Turning to a heliocentric model, we can put the customer at the center of the universe. What affects him or her? The services they interact with and certain key metrics about those services. So when we think about, uh, about metrics, we'd like to segment them into a couple different categories. Um, the first is work metrics. Uh, these are metrics that affect your customer directly. It might be the latency of your service, uh, for instance. Uh, it might be whether it's, whether, whether it's up all the time or how many errors are being thrown. Um, on the resource side, on the other hand, it represents the underlying, uh, the underlying components that, that, power, that, that generate that work, that let you generate that work. So for example, CPU, memory, or network are resources that power you know, your API requests. Um, and so in, a, you know, in, in Kubernetes, this, might, this might, might, might show up as something like CPU, the amount of CPU you're allocating to your applications, um, or, or in a more problematic sense, um, the network usage, since the schedulers don't often take network IO into account. Uh, and that contention can represent significant, um, significant, significant challenges for you, especially in a microservices sort of type of world like we're doing here with service meshes and, and, uh, and app mesh today, uh, because all of that does traverse the network. Um, but another service is often commonly your resource as well, because your work metrics are likely being consumed by somebody else, and you're their downstream resource. So in that sense, maybe you're a credential service downstream of a login service, um, and so you're gonna, your, your, your work turns out to be the, the resource that that login service depends on and could impact the end user. So with that, you'll often find that this, that the, this categorization applies all the way down. Um, one, works, one service's work metrics are another's uh, resources, and you follow all the way down until you find the root cause or the pattern for the behavior that might be impacting your, your customer. So here we have a trace. This represents an entire transaction made by one of your customers. As we can see, there are multiple paths of dependent services. And whether or not one application calls another 
or many are called in sequence by the same root, the latency experienced by the user, which is the center of our universe after all, is the cumulative latency injected by every other part. Enabled to, in order to able, enable point-to-point application-based routing, the AWS App Mesh proxy lives as a sidecar in every workload. By monitoring the mesh layer, whether you've instrumented your application or not, you can monitor the entire call stack. You can't always, and you can't always instrument every application. Either you don't manage that dev team somewhere else in your organization, or you're using a third-party tools that you haven't had the opportunity to instrument. Request in introspection lifts the burden of instrumentation off of your engineering team, but maintains the observability you need in your system. This brings me back to AWS App Mesh. AWS App Mesh performs this routing at the application layer and provides us with this introspection, neatly applying to our service-centric model of the universe. By observing trace data automatically across the mesh, we can empirically determine dependencies. Of these dependencies, we can monitor key metrics to make sure to rapidly respond to deterioration, and at every layer, collect logs and make them accessible by joining them with our other data along tags. So let me show you what I mean. Sorry. All right, so here we have our service map. I'm gonna focus on the Envoy proxy. And during this demo, we've only traced the app mesh itself. We haven't uh, used our instrumentation libraries to instrument the code in the applications. So here we see the Envoy proxy is connected to many other services. In this case, in this example, uh, I'm a radio station and I might be playing some smooth jazz for some customers and metal for others. So here we have, oh, sorry. So here we have our dependent services uh, and our at, at, uh, at mesh proxy. If I click into here, I can view my traces uh, directly. So here I'm looking at the Jazz service uh, specifically, and I can see all of the various traces and clicking into one. That's okay. Uh, here I have an Envoy proxy on one host, and here on another host, the proxy that it talks to, and the Jazz uh, service that's uh, traced. This one represents egress and ingress and then the call. Here we can also see the load balancing. We have very few in our Jazz v3 application, so I'm going to even that out with AWS App Mesh. Here I'll go into my console. I can see the load balancing is reflective of what I saw in reality and I will change that in the UI. You can do this uh, in EKS control, cube control. Uh, here I'm gonna change, oh. These are my jazz services. I'm going to change these a little bit uh, to 30%. And I'm gonna save those. Uh, I am not connected, but I have done this. Uh, and what I will see, and this was from a demo that I prepared, just in case this exact thing happened, is that my load balancer does what I expected it to do. I go from about 1% of load, and I scale up to 30% of load. From here, I can click in and view lo the logs for a specific set of services. Here I have those logs, and they're each attached to a trace ID. Because they're attached to a trace ID, I can inspect that service and see what's happening exactly with that service. Here I have uh, my Jazz v3 service that I just load balanced to, 30% of my traffic, and I can see that I'm timing out after two seconds, quite a bit of the time. This is throwing a 418 error. So now I wanna pull that back. Oh, sorry, I'll go into trace search analytics and I can see 
across all of my services, though I've load balanced the way I expect to, that my customers are having a bad time. So now I'm going to pull it back. I'll come back over here. I'll change things to the way they were. Save that. And again, this comes back to what we expect. We've load balanced away from that problematic service, and now I can update the service or do whatever I want at the replica level. But I've already moved my traffic away. Here, I'll come back to the main screen, and I'll look at all of my traces, and I'll see that my customer uh, experience is back to normal. So that's a quick overview of using App Mesh uh, to load balance your traffic and observe what happens through Datadog. It was a very brief overview of using Datadog. We'll have a booth at KubeCon uh, that everybody should come by and see. Thank you.